Hola Unconventionals, I'm Amelia. And I'm JP. And we're sharing our unconventional life with you from Cuenca, Ecuador. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about the weather in Cuenca, the best time of year to come and what clothes to bring so you are stay dry and don't freeze. <laughs> <laughs> or don't get overheated. <laughs> or don't get overheated. <laughs> but before we jump into all of that, we want to give a big thank you to our awesome producers from Patreon, Michael and Melissa from Longmont, Colorado. Hola, guys. Hola. Thank you guys so much for all of your support. We are very grateful. Yes, we are. And since we've hit 100 patrons, I can't believe it, Amelia, over 100. And over 100 patrons each month, we're going to have a special video, probably a day in the life or it's just something interesting that we've done. And that will just be for our patrons. So if you're interested in becoming a patron for as little as $3 per month, so that we can continue making our videos. I'll put a link to that in the description as well. Okay. All right, now we're gonna jump into our weather. Yes, let's talk weather, <laughs> Cuenca weather. Yeah, the first thing we wanna talk about are the seasons. Yes, we call them winter and summer, but I feel like the seasons are actually spring and fall here. The seasons are really from May through September is winter. <laughs> And then uh, October, September, October through April is summer. There's really not a lot of difference between the two, except it's a little cooler in the winter and a little warmer in the summer. And it's a little cloudier in the winter and a little more sunny in the summer. Yes. And then there's more rain usually in the winter months. Yeah. Although. <laughs> yeah. Everything although. is different this last year. So we're going to go through some weather charts that showed the past five years worth of data, weather data. The first one we're going to talk about is the temperature. And this chart shows us the average temperatures in Fahrenheit, since we're American and we're still stuck in the Fahrenheit system and Celsius makes no sense to us. <laughs> <laughs> the orange line shows the average high, which is in the 60s. And it can get warmer than that, but mm -hmm. the average is in the 60s. The light blue is the average for the day in the 50s, and the dark blue is the average low, which is in the 40s. So it can get into the 70s and even lower 80s. We've had lower 80 days yes, here, have. and especially when the sun is out. And we've also had days where we've woken up in the morning and it's in the 30s and you can almost see your breath while you're laying in bed. So it can get pretty cool here too. The next chart is for sunshine, and it shows the number of sunny days and sunny hours per month. Yes, and sunny days means an actual full day of sunshine, maybe a wispy cloud here and there, but not an afternoon shower or anything like that. The black bars show the sunny days per month, so we're going to point out the differences between this year and previous years. So before 2019, we averaged about 10 sunny days per month. Between July and December of 2019, we had zero sunny days. Zero! Yeah, it was very cloudy. It was brutal. It's been <laughs> brutal. The blue area on this chart shows the number of sunny hours per month. And prior to May of 2019, we averaged about 300 sunny hours per month. Since June of 2019, we've averaged 100. That's one third of the sunny hours per month. So that's why it feels so much like Seattle this year. Yeah, it's definitely been interesting. It's a lot different than the first year we were here. The next chart is about clouds and humidity. The black bars prior to May 2019, we averaged about 75% humidity. And since then, it's been about 85% humidity. So the humidity has been higher, which makes sense because it's been raining so much right. more. So the blue area, it shows the average cloudy days per month. And prior to May of 2019, we averaged about 30% cloudy days. So it was, 30, it was cloudy 30% of the time. Since then, it's been cloudy 70% of the time, more than twice as cloudy as it was our first year and, and the previous four years. The next chart shows rainfall. We're showing the rainfall in inches and the number of rainy days per month. Yes, and the black bar shows the rainy days per month. And prior to October of 2018, that was the year after we got here in 2017, we averaged about 10 to 20 rainy days per month, depending on the season. And since October of 2018, it has rained almost every single day. Now, sometimes it rains at night, which mm -hmm. is actually kind of nice. The house yeah. is sleeping and you wake up and... And everything's washed off and it's yes. just, everything's really been green for the last year. Yes, it has. Because of all the rain. But even last year, we were talking with Edwin and he said the farmers were worried because during the dry season, they couldn't, they weren't able to plant their crops because it, there had been so much rain. And that was a year ago, over a year ago. Mm -hmm. The blue area shows the rainfall in inches per month. And prior to July of 2019, last year, we averaged less than two inches per month of rainfall. 
since August of 2019, we've been getting five to 10 inches per month of rain. So for, for the last six months or so, it just rains all the time. Yeah, that's a lot of rain, especially yeah. like JP said, we're from Denver, we're not used to that. However, it's not snow. <laughs> <laughs> Although the charts that I was looking at do show snowfall in Cuenca. Really? <laughs> this year, this last this last summer. I, we didn't see it here. But I think it may have been up in San Joaquin in the higher elevation yeah. part of town. It must have been just a dusting. I know there was mm -hmm. some snow in the Cajas. Yeah, but for the, la the previous nine years, there had never been snow here. Wow. <laughs> so things are changing. <laughs> so that kind of gives you an overview of the weather. And we hope that things return back to normal. And that this this isn't the new norm. We really do because this isn't uh, this isn't that nice. The weather has not been that nice. Really, the last six to twelve months has been a lot different. We've had some sunny days. It's definitely warmed up now that we're in the summer. But a couple of days ago, it was chilly and it just poured rain all afternoon. So yeah, just... yeah, we went out to lunch on what Saturday afternoon, and we were sitting out on the patio. It was beautiful, yeah. sunny, seventy four, and then all of a sudden the wind picked up. The clouds came in. The temperature dropped about ten degrees yeah. in fifteen minutes, and man, we couldn't get home fast enough. <laughs> Yeah, we got home and I think five minutes later it just started pouring and it rained for hours. Yeah, it did. And it, yeah. So you just never know. You never know. You have to dress for all seasons, all Which, three seasons here. Yeah, but for, before we talk about what clothes to bring, we want to talk about the best times to visit. And it's not just weather dependent on when you visit Cuenca. Some of it depends on the holidays. Exactly. So Cuenca Days is November 3rd. That's the Cuenca Independence Day. So that whole week of the first week in November, is really busy. There's like tens of thousands of people that visit Cuenca during that time. Yeah. So the lodging is more expensive. Everything is crowded. The restaurants are more crowded. However, if you like that kind of thing, there's all kinds of outdoor shopping and activities and celebrations. It's a lot of fun. It is. But it's going to be a lot more people. And if that's not your thing, you might not want to come during that time. Yeah. <laughs> so the same applies to the week between Christmas and New Year's. Yeah, a lot of things are closed. Chris, the holidays here, oh my gosh, they're a blast. We had such a great time for the Christmas Eve parade mm -hmm. and New Year's Eve celebrations. It's super fun, but it is crowded. And then a lot of people end up packing up and going to the coast. So a lot of things are closed. Yeah, a lot of the Quaconos leave <laughs> because of all the people in the parties and, yep. and how loud it is. Plus Salinas, we've heard, is the, the place to be for New Year's Eve. It's a lot quieter on New Year's Eve here than it than it is around Christmas. Christmas is packed because mm -hmm. of the parades and stuff. Yeah, but it is super fun, and mm -hmm. it's generally a really nice to, time to come. I think December is usually pretty mm -hmm. safe as far as warmer and drier weather goes mm -hmm. in general. Yeah, and the next time of year to consider is Carnival. Mm -hmm. And if you don't like to get doused with water <laughs> or hit with water balloons from moving cars or just have been shot with water guns or foam or foam yeah, yeah uh, you you don't want to be here that week <laughs> it's the whole week too it's a big party and that's another one where things are going to be more expensive and mm -hmm. lodging is going to sell out quicker yeah but a lot of people absolutely love it, it really depends mm -hmm. on your personal preference yeah it's, it is a lot of fun i i personally don't enjoy getting hit with water balloons from passing cars <laughs> it doesn't feel good and i don't like being wet <laughs> but some people, I guess, enjoy that. Yeah, and in general, um, the weather is nicer then. So if you do get wet, you mm -hmm. probably won't be freezing. Yeah, you won't be as freezing. <laughs> so that carnival is a week of Fat Tuesday and Ash Wednesday. Now we're going to talk about what clothes to bring and other things like umbrellas and etc. And we're going to give you a fashion show. So we'll see you in just a minute. This is what I wear almost all the time. I wear a long sleeve shirt so I can roll up the sleeves when it's warm and I can roll them down when it gets cool. I wear jeans a lot and comfortable walking shoes. Jeans are very popular in Ecuador. Everybody wears jeans as all the time. You see jeans all the time. People dress a lot nicer. The Ecuadorians dress a lot nicer than us gringos typically. Um, I also always have a hat with this. I prefer this one because it gives more shade to my ears because the sun at this altitude is very high or very hot. And I also have other, a variety of hats. For those of you who've watched us for a while, you know about all my hats. Almost always have sunglasses on when we're outside because the sun is so bright. I do like my cargo pants once in a while. I see a lot of gringos wearing cargo pants. They're functional because you usually have pockets that you can snap that are more secure. 
but Ecuadorians do not wear cargo pants in general and they kind of think that we look sloppy when we wear them so I don't wear them very often. I also always have this jacket at night. This is a rain jacket but it's also a little bit thicker and warmer because it can get pretty chilly at night especially when we go out to eat dinner. Good shoes are important. I brought these hikers when we came here and look at the soles. There's nothing left on them. The sidewalks and the streets are really hard and they just tear through cleated shoes. So you're really better having like a flat sole walking shoe uh, when you're in the city. These are, these are fine when you go to Cajas, but, but not when you're in town. I also always have my backpack with me with an umbrella because it may rain or it may be so sunny that I need the shade. I need the shade from the umbrella. I always have water because at this altitude, you always have water. And inside I have a rain, an extra rain jacket because it can rain suddenly. And sunscreen is also important. This is something that you might want to bring from the States because they don't have a lot of selection for sunscreen here. It's also a lot more expensive and you aren't going to find anything that says cruelty free on it or reef safe. So we like to bring our sunscreen from the States. It's cheaper and it's more environmentally friendly. All right, Amelia, are you ready to, to show the ladies what you like to wear? Yes, I am. All right, we'll do it. This is a typical outfit for me in the warmer weather. I am wearing short sleeves today, but a lot of times I wear long sleeves. I have jeans on and my comfortable walking shoes. As you can see, I also have a couple pairs of boots, which I like to wear um, if it's colder out or if it's raining. Besides my jeans, I wear yoga pants a lot. They're super comfortable. Yoga pants. And I also have a nice variety of long sleeve shirts. I have a couple regular lightweight sweaters I wear as well in the winter time, but it's all about the layers here. If I'm not wearing a jacket, I always have a jacket with me and I usually carry it in my bag. I had a scarf on earlier and as you guys have probably noticed, I have lots of scarves and they're all different weights from my winter to cool to this is from India, so hot weather. I like to wear the scarves to keep me warm and also it adds nice sun protection. And I also do the same with hats. So I have my sunny day hats, which is good for shade. And if it's chilly morning or evening, I have a nice variety of hats. Over here I have a couple of reusable bags. I like to bring these with me when we're out and about in case we decide to pop in the, mar the, the, the pop in the Mercado and pick up some fruit or something. I have this great bag that I got in the Charlotte airport. It's super lightweight and it's water resistant. I like it because it's got lots of zippers, so it's really handy for traveling. And inside I always have my Packable raincoats. I always carry water, always, always. I always have an umbrella. If it's winter or rainy season, I have a full size, but this is a really nice lightweight travel umbrella. And of course, gotta have my sunglasses. Gotta have the shades. <laughs> and what about the tiara, Amelia? The tiara is a special occasion or while I'm working. <laughs> <laughs> I love my tiara. But lastly, as JP mentioned, sunscreen. You have to have sunscreen here because it may be cloudy and then you could walk out the door and the sun comes out and you will be fried. I always put sunscreen on this part of my body before I leave and I lately I've been putting more on my arms since it's summertime. I have to tell you guys, I got this by mistake. It's actually a bronzer. And I'm like, oh, this will be great for JP, but I didn't read the bronzer part. And it works great for my skin, but on him, it makes him look really orange like Ricardo Monteblan. So, <laughs> <laughs> so now this one's mine. And Leisha has decided to... <laughs> Leisha's gonna camp out on the clothes yes. now. Are you, do you wanna be in the video? <laughs> <laughs> all right Amelia let's wrap this up okay that's all we have for today if you think of anything that we forgot or if you have any questions feel free to leave those in the comments so we can respond to those yes and if you haven't done so already please subscribe ring the bell and if you like this video leave us a thumbs up please and feel free to share this on social media and with all your friends all right guys we'll see you all in our next video ciao, ciao.